we finally come to that part of the course where we're going to be discussing capacitors and inductors. And uh, so we'll begin by just uh, talking about their IV characteristics, and both of them are have IV characteristics uh, that change in time. Uh, so the IV characteristics are here. So for a capacitor, this is the symbol for a capacitor. Again, we have current flowing in and a voltage across it. That voltage across it is equal to 1 over the capacitance, whatever it is. That's how we label the capacitor, uh, uh, times the integral of I dt. Or, put another way, the current equals the, the capacitance times the change in voltage. You might know this as uh, Q equals CV that we've used before, and if we just take the derivative of this, we get this. So, the current through a capacitor uh, is equal to the rate of change of voltage across it. And the voltage across the capacitor is equal to the charge, the buildup of the current, so the integral of the current divided by the capacitance. Inductors are similar. Here's what the, the inductor looks like. It looks like a coil. Again, there's a current going in and a voltage drop across it. In this case, the voltage is the derivative of the current. So when the current is changing, we get a voltage. And the current is then proportional to the inductance uh, times the integral of the voltage change. So the integrals and derivatives change places uh, in the inductor versus the capacitor. So we measure capacitance in farads, and that's one coulomb per one volt. We get that from, from this definition. Uh, inductance is measured in henrys, and that's one volt per amp per second. Uh, that comes from this definition. And uh, so in both cases, uh, capacitors and inductors uh, store energy in their electric field for the capacitor and the magnetic field for the inductor. And we can calculate this by just integrating uh, power over time. We haven't talked much about power yet, but power, as the, uh, I hope you know, is the current instantaneously. It's the current times the voltage. Uh, and so if we integrate that, we'll get the total energy integrated over time. So power is energy per time. And so if we integrate power with respect to time, we'll get some energy. Energy density is actually what we'll get here. And so in a capacitor, we just integrate uh, this equation. And we have I and V. And we're just going to write uh, I in terms of dV. And that's how we get this. So, uh, And we'll see that here we have V dV. So when we integrate, we're going to get one-half V squared. And so the energy stored in a capacitor is one-half C times the voltage across it squared. Uh, we do the same thing for the inductor, in which case we, we start with I and we replace V with its di dt to get a similar expression. In that case, the energy in an inductor stored in the magnetic field is one-half L I squared. Now it's important to know how both capacitors and inductors uh, behave in the steady state. Uh, so first we have to say what the steady state is. A steady state has a current, which is charges moving, but that current can't change in time. Uh, so uh, voltages can't change in time, currents can't change in time, but there can be a positive or non-zero current. Uh, so if we use the derivative forms of the IV characteristics, uh, you know, here and here, we see that if the voltage can't change in time, there can't be any current through a capacitor because this term is zero. And you can see that as the capacitor looks like it has an open circuit. Also, if we look at the inductor e equation for the voltage, we see that if the current can't change in time, this term is zero. So the voltage across an inductor is zero as if this was just a wire, which in sense it is, it's only a coiled wire. Okay, so with those preliminaries, we can now uh, begin analyzing simple circuits uh, that just have a resistor and a capacitor in them, or a resistor and an inductor. But first, we'll do the capacitance case. In both, ca in both, with both capacitors and inductors, we're going to get first-order differential equations. So we call these uh, first-order circuits. So we begin with this circuit where I have a current supply that I'm going to change in time. In fact, it's just going to be turned on or off. Uh, and I have a capacitor, and I have an inductor. And I'm going to start and say that at all times up to time equals zero, 
uh, I have the current on at a constant value I naught. Uh, and in, so then we can easily do the steady state, which is that no current flows through the capacitor, so I just ignore it. And so in this state I have a DC current flowing through a resistor, and so I know that the voltage is just V naught equals I naught R naught from the uh, IV characteristic of the resistor from Ohm's law. Now things become interesting when I turn off the current source at t equals zero and figure out what happens. Now the easiest way to do this is to use the node method. I'm going to use this node with, with this node being the ground. Since it is off, I, I leave it as an open circuit, which means it's not there. So I only have this loop, in which case ic has to equal ir, or uh, uh, if I give them different signs, their sum equals zero since they're both pointing out as I've drawn them. Now, uh, the capacitor, uh, I replace IC. This is the plus side. This is the minus side. IC goes in the plus side. I replace that with CDVDT. That's here. And of course, I use Ohm's law to replace IR with uh, V over R. And now you can see that I have my differential equation. If I move this term over on the other side, I have and, and divide by C, I have the rate of change of the voltage equals the opposite of the voltage divided by this constant RC, and RC must have units of time. And so it's easy to integrate this. A derivative equaling itself times a constant is an exponential, and so I have some arbitrary amplitude, and, uh, and then I have an exponential decay. It's an exponential decay because of the minus sign uh, and the minus sign just comes from the node method and the definition of what way the currents are going. So uh, I have to match up my before zero and after zero, and that lets me determine A. A is, is just V naught. So my answer is then uh, the voltage is the starting voltage and then decays away exponentially. By the way, when it decays exponentially, it means that after one RC time period, I've decayed to about a third. And after five RC time periods, I have only a percent or so left. Now we can turn things around and have this, the current source off at first and then turn on. So in this case, I'm saying this is off at first. There can't be any voltage here, so there also can't be a voltage there. So clearly, I have no current and no voltage to begin with. When I turn on the source now, I have at this node, I'll do the node equation again, I have I going in and IC and IR going out, so that's my node equation, and I, I do the same plugging in of the IV characteristics, and now I get this first order differential equation, uh, capacitance times the rate of change of voltage plus voltage over R equals I naught, and this isn't so easy to, to uh, solve as the last one, though it's not difficult. And so uh, this is called a non-homogeneous uh, differential, linear differential equation because I have V and, and V prime and I have constant coefficients but I have a term without any V in it. That's the non-homogeneous part. So how will we find solutions in this class when we need to? All we need to do is follow this method. Uh, first we find a solution to the corresponding homogeneous equation, that's if I naught were, were equal to zero, and we did that before. We know that it's uh, A e to the minus V over RC. And then we find a particular solution with I naught. In this case, uh, it has to be something like uh, that uh, non-homogeneous piece. In this case, it's a constant, so I can pick V as a constant as a solution. If V is a constant, then dV dt equals zero, and I just have to pick V right to get I naught. And then I add that particular solution to the homogeneous solution to get the most general equation for the solution. So I'm actually going to solve this one, where I have V prime equals one over RCV I naught over C. And here I go. So the homogeneous solution we had before e to the a times e to the minus t over tau. Tau, by the way, is rc. It has units of time. And the particular solution is that v, uh, vp over rc has to equal i naught over c. So that means I just have to put in that factor of r. So it's r times i naught. And so I just add these two together down here. That's my 
particular solution and my homogeneous solution. And then I just have to solve at v equals 0 for this sum equaling 0, which tells me that a is minus v naught. And then I get the solution uh, v is v naught times 1 minus e to the minus t over tau, or e to the minus t over rc. And this grows from 0 quickly up to t over tau, as I've shown here. So here I've divided time by rc, v by v naught, and you see I start at 0. I'm, I'm 0 all along here. You don't see it. And then at 0, when the current source turns on, I charge up the capacitor, and the voltage slowly grows uh, up to the maximum value, which is just given by I, uh, by the current only flowing through the resistor. Now we move to the uh, LC circuit, replacing the capacitor with an inductor, uh, and we'll find a very similar behavior. Uh, this time I'm going to use a, a voltage source rather than a current source, because that makes more sense with the inductor. And again, I'm going to start by assuming that in the steady state, I have uh, this uh, power source is on at some value of E0. And since it's steady state, uh, the current cannot be changing through the inductor, so there can be no voltage across it. So all the voltage drop is across the resistor, and therefore I can calculate what the current is. It's just uh, V0 over R. And so that's my steady state initial current. Now at T equals zero, I'm going to turn off the voltage supply. I can still do a KVL loop. Now I have a zero here, explicitly. I turned it off. I set it equal to zero. And so uh, I'm going to have to have a voltage drop uh, across the resistor and a voltage drop across the inductor opposite each other. And I write that down. That's my KVL loop here. And so I have VR equals V. V is, is the uh, voltage across the inductor. And then I plug in those two values, IR for R, and then uh, LDIDT uh, for the inductor. And that gives me my uh, equation. Uh, now, so I write I prime, I divide by the L, uh, plus R over L times I equals zero. That's homogeneous equation, so it's easy to solve. I just have to uh, put in the right value of the a time constant, and I see that I've made a mistake here. Uh, the time constant is not R over L. Uh, the time constant is L over R. Uh, you can see that uh, because here we have I prime, which has current over uh, di dt, so it's current over time. Here I have current, so I have to divide by time, not multiply by time as I had before. In any case, uh, that's my uh, time constant, and I know that I'm going to decay uh, to zero current now. I set up this equation to be the equation for current. will decay with this time constant. And by setting uh, t equals zero and matching up the initial current to the final current, I find that uh, I get a equals i naught. So then uh, we can also consider the case where I start with the inductor, uh, with the voltage source off and turn it on. Uh, for the voltage source off, I have no source of voltage. Everything's uh, come to rest and I have no current either. So it's easy to see that uh, the current should be zero. Uh, and then at t equals zero, I turn it on. Or, sorry, the voltage is zero. Uh, and I see I made another mistake. So here it's not the initial current is, is zero. Uh, I have it right below, but not now. Uh, so now when I turn it on, I write down my equation again. I have a voltage increase here, V naught. I lose as I go through R by VR. I lose as the current goes through uh, the inductor by V. I plug in those values, and now I have nearly the same equation as I had before, but it's no longer homogeneous. I just have to pick a particular solution, which is going to be uh, I equals V naught over R. When I plug that in uh, here for the solution, uh, the R's will cancel, the L will come in, and I'll get V naught over L, as I expected. So then when I write down the full equation, my particular solution, my homogeneous solution, and then I pick the uh, value for A by knowing that the voltage at the beginning equals zero, 
Uh, so A has to equal minus IL. And so I get the characteristic uh, rising exponentially to an asymptotic value, like so. Um, I didn't write tau here, so there's no mistake. Uh, but again, tau, in this case, is L over R.